So please, you can start your presentation. Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Instructor Mustafa Shahin uh, from Meto Center for Wind Energy, Middle East Technical University in Turkey. <clears throat> Today, I am going to present our study titled Effects of Atmospheric Icing on Performance of Controlled Wind Turbine. Here in this study, uh, we investigated the icing effects on full <clears throat> behavior of a large scale wind turbine, which is the US National Renewable Energy Laboratory 5 megawatt wind turbine in terms of uh, various main turbine parameters using the uh, MS bladed model. We did this study because the full behavior uh, of wind turbine under icing is a large uncertainty for both the turbine designers and the investors. <clears throat> and here I will start with the introduction parts and then uh, I will explain you the MS bladed wind turbine simulation model briefly and then focus on the wind turbine operational regions and control purposes, and then move to how we model the icing on NREL 5 megawatt turbine blades. And then lastly, we check the performance estimation of the NREL 5 megawatt turbine under icing, you know, with and without icing using the MS bladed model. First of all, Wind turbines are now one of the leading systems for electricity generation in the world. And they are seen as onshore replication and offshore applications. And the offshore applications are gaining popularity uh, within the last decades. And these machines are now used by more than 90 countries around the world. And the total installed capacity exceeds 740 gigawatt around the world, according to the last Quebec report. For onshore applications, you know, high altitudes and cold regions are attractive sites for uh, wind turbine investors. But unfortunately, at these sites, the turbines are prone to atmospheric icing, which deteriorates the performance of the wind turbines, reducing the power output and increasing the turbine structure loading, such as the task force. Therefore, the industry is trying to get rid of these icing issues and they are using active and passive methods like, for instance, as active methods, they are sending hot air circulation inside the blades and they are trying to heating the blades. And as passive methods, they are using special coatings or painting the blades in black. And when we have, you know, as I told you, icing, the structure loadings are increasing and we may lose the turbine components such as blades and damage the tower, or eventually we can lose the whole turbine. Here, for instance, you know, I have a recently published study the titled Adaptive Envelope Protection Control of Wind Turbines under various operational conditions, you know, such as icing. You know, it, it, it is uh, published a highly impact, you know, journal, Energy, the International Journal. And there I proposed an algorithm uh, to deal with this issue. And here in our study, we are going to investigate what is happening when we have icing on rotor blades in terms of main turbine parameters, such as power output, thrust force, uh, <clears throat> rotor speed, blade pitch angle. First of all, the MS bladed model is a wind turbine simulation model that I developed to my during PhD years and it includes particular coordinate systems in important aerodynamic corrections to simulate most modern turbines, you know, with structural, different structural angles and under various operating conditions such as normal or extreme turbulent winds, icing, et cetera. And it has nozzle yawn capability and blade pitching capability collectively or individually. And now the system, turbine system in the MS bladed model is constrained to be consisting of rigid structures. And just like a turbine in wind farm, it consists of a turbine rotor, a gearbox, and a variable torque electrical generator. And most modern turbines are variable speed, variable pitch turbines. And these turbines has four different operational regions. And these are region one, region two, region three, and region four. 
For instance, this figure is given for a five megawatt wind turbine. And the vertical axis is the power, horizontal axis is the wind speed. And you see a red dash line gives me the rated power of this turbine. And blue curve is the power available in the wind. And the green <coughs> curve is the controlled power curve of this turbine. And the turbine starts producing the electricity at a wind speed, which we call cutting wind speeds, and stops generating the electricity at a higher wind speed, which we call cutout wind speed. And here it is 25 meter per second, and it is common for most of the turbines. And the electricity is not produced by the turbine in region one because the A free stream velocity is very much low. So we don't get any electricity from the turbine. We don't get any electricity from the turbine in region four either because the wind speeds are very large here and stormy. So therefore, we stop the turbine in this region. The electricity is generated between cutting and cutout wind speeds in region two and region three. And these two regions is separated by the rated wind speed. In below rated, in region two, which we also call below rated region, the, we have good amount of wind speeds, but those wind speeds level are not enough for the turbine to generate the rated power. Therefore, our aim here is to increase the efficiency of the turbine rotor. To increase the efficiency, we are controlling the generator torque to operate the turbine at the optimum tip speed ratio for the maximum power coefficient. And as you see, we get partial electricity. And this region is also called partial load region. In region three, we have wind speeds more than enough. So we are uh, regulating the mechanical power of the turbine to the rated power of the generator by changing the blade pitch angles. And here we are using the blade pitch controller to regulate the rotor speed to its rated angular velocity. Since the, in this region, the generator torque is constant at its rated value, I am getting the rated power from the turbine in this region. So it is also called full load region or above rated region. During this turbine operation in region two and three, we have another controller, which guides the turbine rotor, puts the turbine rotor into the wind coming direction. It is the yaw controller. Unfortunately, as I told you, icing is a undesired phenomenon occurring on turbines at high altitudes in cold regions particularly you know, in winters. And when the spur cooled with water droplets hits to the turbine surfaces, such as the turbine blades, it freezes into ice immediately or after a certain delay. And these icing particularly occurs at the leading edge of the turbine airfoils. And when we check the literature, there are scientists tries to investigate the icing phenomenon and its effect on the airfoils, turbine airfoils, numerically or experimentally. For instance, I inspired here uh, from the study of Brandrus and Kroganus that is done in 2017 on the NREL S826. They investigated different icing types such as lime ice, glaze ice, mix ice, et cetera. And here, this is one of the case of icing. And they use Levi's code to generate this icing shape and they select this, these parameters and here these values and obtained this icing shape and produced this artificially and then attach that icing shape to the actual airfoil and then test it in a wind tunnel. And you see, these are the aerodynamics data of that airfoil with and without icing. And the first one is the CL versus angle of attack data. And the second one is CD versus angle of attack data. And the black one, uh, black uh, results belong to the clean airfoil and blue results belong to the iced airfoil. You see, when we have icing, the CL of the airfoil decreases 
along this angle of attack range and see the increases. This is in fact the characteristics of atmospheric icing on a turbine airfoil. And the amount of decrease in CL and the increase in CD directly depend on how severe is the icing is. If the icing is really large, then the drop in CL will be large and the CD will be large as well. And another fact is that the ice accumulation throughout the blade span increases from blade to root to tip. Therefore, there will be a large change in the aerodynamic data of the airfoils as those are close to blade tip, but there will be a minor changes in the aerodynamic data close to the blade root. So knowing these facts, I modified the aerodynamic data of NL5 megawatt airfoils throughout the blade span, considering a very light ice accumulation to see what is happening in the in main parameters. For instance, this DU40A17 is an airfoil section located on the third blade section of the NL5 megawatt turbine blade. You see, since it is very close to the blade root, there is a very slight change in CL dropped and there, there is a very slight increase in CD. And when I zoom in this part, you can see uh, there, is, there, is, there are very slight changes in these values. But when we go to the blade tip, for instance, uh, to the section 16 blade section, which we have NACA 64A17 airfoil there, the last section, you know, the, the section before the last section, the, the decrease in CL and the increase in CD are very clear and much larger than the changes at the root. And when I zoom in this part, you see, we can see the changes clearly. And when I apply all these modification throughout the place and use this data as input to the MS bladed models and compare it with, with the clean blades, here is my uh, CP versus tip speed ratio. I mean the efficiency of the NL5 megawatt turbine root. You see, at all these tip speed ratios, there is a, you know, the CP of the turbine CP curve dropped, right? And at low tip speed ratio, the change in CP, the drop in CP is smaller than the drop in at high tip speed ratio. Now let's look at the full performance of the controlled wind turbine from cutting to cutout wind speed. Here we will give the similar you know, results in terms of power, blade pitch angle, thrust, and rotor speed. You see, this is the uh, vertical axis is the power and uh, horizontal axis is the wind speed. You see, uh, we have uh, black and green colored uh, you know, control power curve. These are obtained respectively using the MS bladed model and the NREL fast simulation model. You see both model gives almost the same performance results because it's the same turbine. And when we have icing, you see the blue curve here. And when we consider a very light icing, you see the power in the below rated region is you know, decreasing. And in the above rated region, the blade pitch controller still regulates the turbine power output due to the, uh, you know, uh, due to the fact that we considered a very light icing case. And this is, you know, uh, achieved by the blade pitch controller setting the blade pitch angles to lower values. And see also that the turbine with clean blade starts producing the electricity at cut and mean speeds of three meters per second. But when we have eyes in the turbine, this time start producing the electricity at a slightly larger wind speed. You know, this time the turbine start producing the electricity at 3.7 meters per second. Also see that the rated wind speed of the turbine is shifted to a larger values, you know, in, in, in region three. And see, there is another uh, data in giant color. And this is also obtained by Homole et al using the BM analysis before. And you see the drop in power is much larger than the case here. This means that the severity of icing, ice accumulation is much larger than the currently considered icing case here. 
And in the below rated region, the blade pitch controller still, you know, adjusts its the blade pitch angle at its optimum value. And when we go to the thrust force of the turbine, you see in the below rated region, thrust drops, you know, decreases. But in the above rated region, since we adjusted the blade pitch angles to lower values for power regulation, and when we have the icing on turbine blades, the thrust force increases. And we regulate the turbine rotor speed, as you see, blade pitch controller still regulates the power here at these wind speeds. And in the below rated region, the rotor speeds, you know, goes to the lower, uh, you know, angular velocities at steady states. This is due to the fact that the ice accumulated on the blades increases the inertia of the turbine rotor, which also affects the changes, the cut and wind speed of the turbine. Okay, these are all what can I say uh, and my comments uh, and the simulation results. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any question, uh, I can answer. Thank you for your interesting presentation. How, how you can prevent icing problem? Uh, you know, industry is using, as I told you, uh, several methods, you know, for instance, they are sending uh, hot air circulation inside the blades and they are heating the blade surfaces mm -hmm. and they are using, uh, you know, coatings, particle coatings around the blades during manufacture and they are painting the blades uh, in black, you know, uh, uh, to get to utilize the uh, sun effect on the blades. Uh, here, we didn't utilize any methods to melt the ice, but we explore what is happening on the turbine performance. You know, in the literature, scientists are usually dealing with the on the 2D airfoil, you know, but I uh, extend this idea to the throughout to all full turbine behavior, you know. Scientists are investigating on the 2D airfoil. I, I wanted this to what is happening on the full turbine behavior, which parameters are being affected due to icing. Mm -hmm. But in my previous study, instead of melting the ice, maybe uh, uh, during light icing case, I proposed an adaptive algorithm that can understand the icing, you know, adapts to the ice, ice plates and keeps the turbine loading within a desired limit. For instance, over there in this study, I keep the thrust force within a limit. I think. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay.